Welcome back to another episode of the Successful Driver Podcast presented by Aero Truck Sales. Very excited today to have Stan Saunders, the Road Choice HVAC product support person there. Stan, so excited to be talking with you, listening in and hanging out here a little bit before we recorded. Very excited to be, be hearing from you today, my friend. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. <laughs> well, I your energy is infectious, my friend. I got to tell you that so much. So um, we always start the show with this and, you know, kind of hearing a little bit about your background here already, but you've been in the trucking industry for a while. Why don't you just kind of just tell us your industry background here from when you started, how you got into now? Great. I've been in a business here for over 40 years. If you go back to the late 70s, uh, working with trucks and truck drivers and maintenance facilities, a lot of things have changed. And if you look at today's truck in the same situation, it's totally different than it was. So the technology has changed, uh, the roads have changed, the vehicles have changed, and the expectation on drivers have changed over the years. So there's a lot to keep up with and reflect back on. So how many roles have you carried throughout your time here in the trucking industry? What, what kind of roles have you fulfilled in the last 40 years? Well, mostly sales and marketing, but we have done some technical training in the past as well. And some installation on AC systems and AC units. Wow. You kind of, you've kind of carried a lot of different, different roles yeah. here. Uh, yeah. We always say, Ken, if you if you've installed it, uh, you can talk about it better and sell it better. <laughs> no, I think that makes perfect sense. And yeah. you know, some people don't always necessarily have the industry experience when they're when they're trying to sell some stuff. Like, it's always good to have that crossover, I think. And um, you know, I kind of talked to some of the people here at Arrow, and they may not realize that they have a little bit more marketing savvy than they realize. And it's the guys that have, you know, been under a hood, you know, uh, and if they can effectively communicate it, like, I think that's the name of the game, right? Yeah. We call that street cred. <laughs> you don't have any street cred if you haven't installed a bunch of parts in the past. So keep in mind. that's great. Oh man. So Stan, we always ask this question too, and it's always fascinating to get you no know, different perspectives, but you've seen a lot of truck drivers. What do you think? makes a successful truck driver? Uh, one that's courteous to other drivers, for sure. One that likes their job. And one that appreciates that the company they work for has put them in a good vehicle. Mm. So that's, no, that's where great. they are most of the time. So it's basically being happy with what they're doing. I get it. So you are in the trucking industry, very obviously, or we wouldn't be talking to you. Right. <laughs> What do you think makes a successful driver? How do you help truck drivers find success out on the road? Well, one of the things that helps driver retention and, and recruits drivers is good vehicles. And good vehicles are a, a lot of times identified by having great AC systems. And, and matter of fact, it's not unusual for a, a trucking company to advertise that their trucks are uh, in new condition and have perfectly working AC systems. And that helps drivers make a decision on where they want to go to work. So to be successful as a truck driver is, is working with the tools that they're given sure. and doing the best job for the company that they work for. But we want them to be comfortable. And if they're comfortable, they're more alert on the highway. And AC systems on some trucking companies are, are considered a safety uh, function. And if the AC doesn't work, then that truck could be put out of service. The, but the driver's safety and comfort, again, over the years, has become number one thing in a lot of people's minds. Oh, I 100% I, I understand that. And, I mean, the idea of driving without a functioning HVAC, just for me personally, in my little sedan is terrifying. I couldn't imagine being in, you know, my moving office 10 hours a day you know, trying to even, you know, even these sleepers having to sleep through the night without some level of comfort and stuff in the evening time too, um, yes. where you haven't been able to get the, the, the cab cooled down. I think you know, that that kid, that, 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 oh, that's, that's not a, that's not a great thought. No, it's, it's a horrible thought. And, and particularly if you go back and look over the last 30 years is uh, truck AC was an option. <laughs> like in some cars back in the day, but now we know that AC is standard in trucks. Sure. 
and it has been for a while. Now, something that's changed is not only is it standard, but it has to be working. A lot of trucks back in, say, 10 years ago had, were built with AC, but they're non-functional. Uh, they've broken down and were never fixed. And wow. things have changed and or progressed over the years to where not only do they have to be equipped with AC, but it has to be working properly. Mm. That's, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't imagine. And I mean, that's, that's good. Um, so we always like to, you know, I, I like to ask this question to you. So if I'm a driver, what do I need to know? about HVAC? Well, you need to know that the person that designed and built the truck knows what they're doing. <laughs> They've been making trucks for a long time. They're, they're not idiots. They know how to build an AC system and get the best performance possible out of it. Now, if that's not satisfactory to a, a driver, then they've got another issue, but if the truck is working properly, it's by design. And they need to know that it may or may not cool the truck in every condition that they're in. If, if you're in, in the South United States, Texas, Florida, it gets hot. If you're in Minnesota or Canada, it doesn't get so hot. So the temperature outside has changed uh, more, and more so in the last few years to where it's really super hot. And I don't see that going away anytime soon. No. <laughs> the, the temperatures around the truck uh, because of the EPA uh, is getting hotter. We've got EGR, we've got DPF filters, yep. and all these things generate heat right. uh, that we didn't have uh, in 2007. And now with the additional heat from the temperatures outside and the technology with the EPA regulations, uh, the temperature is, is around the truck is hotter than it ever has. And we've been using the same AC refrigerant mm. for 26 years. So that's something the drivers need to know is, the, the technology is there. We're doing the best we can when we're making trucks. And if that's not satisfactory, then maybe they need to look for some auxiliary AC, but there's, no, there's nothing wrong with what they have. Mm. If, yeah. So out on the road, any early indicators, any signs uh, to detect that maybe your HVAC isn't functioning, firing, uh, at 100% or or might start being a cause for concern. Is there anything that these guys out there on the road can do to, you know, to maybe have, you know, some kind of indication that, you know, the, the, the HVAC might be something that you need to pay attention to? Absolutely. Absolutely. Matter of fact, I'd keep a constant eye on the, the temperature coming out of the outlets. Okay. And when AC system fails, it fails in one of two ways. Very abruptly, if, or it's broken, or it fades away. So you want to keep an eye open for both. And one of the things I always recommend for drivers is to keep a, a dash outlet thermometer like this guy right here. It's about an inch and a half diameter dial right here. And you can look and see that the blue section indicates perfectly working AC on about a 90 degree day. And what we're looking for is about, about a 30 degree drop from ambient temperature outside. So if it's 90 degrees outside, you would want the temperature to be out of the outlets at about 60. Okay. And this pulls right out of its case and slides right into the AC vents and keep it rotated where you can keep an eye on that all the time. Now your truck may or may not tell you what the temperature is outside, but you can determine that from even your phone and always look for about 30 degree drop. If you see that you're not getting your 30 degree drop and that could be gradually increasing, then you'd know that your AC is working properly. And if you start to truck up from uh, the beginning of the day and it's not getting your drop, then you know that it's broken quickly. Mm. That's Yeah, so it's, it's going to be a matter of refrigerant or some uh, components that need to be cleaned, but it does need to be serviced. The sooner the better with something like this. Uh, is that the reality of it? Yeah, absolutely. The sooner the better. Uh, Non-working AC systems laying around uh, will get more damage, more contaminants inside the system if it's open for any reason, and make the job a little more expensive to clean up and repair. Mm. So I like to ask people sometimes with some of their experiences, and this will be a fun question, I think. So do you have any horror stories out on the road? Uh, HVAC, AC hor horror stories out on the road for some guys or some fleets, anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And matter of fact, uh, YouTube and, and TikTok have really showcased some of these things, but it's not uncommon in some places in uh, the United States to have a truck with a house air conditioner bored into the side of the sleeper <laughs> and operated from an inverter. Oh, my Lord. But it, hey, it works in some cases, I would think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's out on TikTok? Yeah. That, that, I've seen a bunch of stuff like that, even on the road. But uh, another another situation you could probably get yourself into uh, in, in some states is uh, cutting the uh, hot water off of the truck. Because a lot of times your AC system's working perfectly, but there's hot water uh, into your heater that's getting into your AC oh, man. system. And to keep that from happening, it's not uncommon for somebody to go to Home Depot and get some water valves and start turning the water off to the cab in about April and turn it back on in October. Oh, man. So, so yeah. So, you know, I always want to tell somebody that if your uh, parts supply list includes Home Depot, you might have some issues there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean... I mean, that's, I guess that's a little bit of like ingenuity, I guess, but also, I mean, Home Depot is a band-aid for a truck is what you're that's telling me. Exactly right. You can get, you can go to the air conditioning department, get a window air conditioner and some water valves and you should be good for, to go for a while. <laughs> uh, but but in, in reality, it's something that happens all over the place, Kent, is uh, something that the drivers have an immediate impact on with the performance of AC is the air filter, the cabin air filter. Sure. Just like at your house, if your condenser or your filters stopped up, you have poor AC performance. And that's what yeah. happens gradually. That won't happen abruptly. And it's not uncommon for some drivers to get that filter out from uh, under the glove box there under the dash and throw it away. Now that creates immediate air condition. Feels great for a while. Yeah running around without an air filter and what clogged the air filter up now is getting into the evaporator yeah which means now their filter and it's about a six seven hundred dollar replacement to get a new evaporator maybe even a, a little bit less to have one cleaned so always as a driver it's be their job to make sure that the ac filter is cleaned maybe even have a spare one under the seat and change it out but never just throw it away <laughs> Yeah, there's so many components that go into being a successful driver. And it's obviously the operational stuff that gets you from point A to point B. But there's so much value in stuff like HVAC that you know, there's there's a long list of things that need to be maintained. There's a lot of, you know, the, the people that are going to be meticulous and thoughtful about filters and those kind of things, I think, are the ones that are, um, you know, ultimately finding a lot of success on the road. And it's it's the little things like it's it's not a little thing. HVAC is not a little thing. It's something I can't imagine being out on the road, you know. So just as you're you know meticulously taking care of your truck when it, as far as you know engine components, I think HVAC is just as critical. And I think you've I think you've done a pretty good job of explaining that today, Stan. Well, thank you. All right. Well, that is another episode of the Successful Driver Podcast. Thank you so much to Stan Saunders. This was a lot of fun. Enjoyed hearing from him. We'll be back next week. Catch you later. Thank you.